Zomi's prayers, God a sacrament. An orange beetle is afloat upon the still pond. His tiny legs flick, steering him left, then right. How did he come to lie upon this vastness, a watery world alien to the air of his existence? Half submerged, he twirls in circles of awareness. How will I escape, or more properly, what power will remove me from this place? The banks are steep rock, threatening, unhelpful. Yet there is a peace here. I am adrift on a quiet plain which seems fixed in time, running neither forward nor back. I shall rest here. The morning sun is warm. The birds will not drop down here to pick my flesh. Reeds upon the banks wave at, as to their ancestors in long ago Palestine. What do they retain of centuries of life? What do I? Forced to study the characters and adventures of history, we learned nothing. They are gone, leaving nothing of value. All value is in the Lord High God. Nothing else registers. To such a state of affairs do we see any traces leading up through centuries and into our time. We do. Clouds sweep in to adorn the morning. Surely these are anticipators of your majestic coming down again to us. Out of the depths I cry unto thee, O Lord. And you come into our depths. We too sit by the rivers of Babylon, our thoughts thrown back upon our life. What depths of human nature are being stirred? Let few traces of that past life now filter into the surface of this present life. Our lamentations, suffering and sin, recollection, remorse and revenge, fear and shame and hate over our confusion upon those. The Spirit of God broods as over the creation chaos, for ours is the same and draws each of them forth in turn upon some articulate prayer. We tend to go forward within and into more of this disorder. We must, piece by piece, pluck out these anathemas and ask that you turn them to blessing. In a crimson flesh of shame, our soul is exceedingly filled with contempt. These we send into tiny boats down Euphrates and into the wide drowning sea. Viewed from above, we see Tigris and Euphrates together formed like a fish and a line drawn, drawing them south into the gulf of sorrow. What is this that keeps God from hearing me? We are heard. The time is not right. The dial of the sun is held back 10 degrees. If you should mark iniquity, who shall stand? We have a sense of innocent suffering. Yet we are not innocent, and never was any. The sun himself rises. Horizon after horizon of your empire is displayed to the eyes of your starved and waiting people. You are the sacrament we are to consume. Yours the sovereignty and omnipotence. You, the God of Israel, which is in all time true believers of true God. It is the sun which makes the day, and not the day which reveals the sun. So it is you, supreme and almighty, who interprets, predicts, and controls your people's history. And not our history, which in its gradual evolving makes your omnipotence and sovereignty manifest to our experience. It is because you are what you are, and not what we ought to know you to be that we are bidden believe our future shall take a course that is uncertain. The ancients felt no need to prove your necessity. Man has little doubted the existence of God as he doubted his own life. But life burns low, needing replenishment. Faith grows despondent and morbid and needs to be drawn away from the world which starved it 
a delirium of idolatries. Ours is to let faith be lifted from the thoughts of our own mind and the works of our own hand and be nourished by the works of God. Let it deepen as we face the spaces of night, having no doubt that it is you who created and guided all events of, of our life. Let us consume you as you do consume us. Amen.